I slept like I used to sleep years ago. Like a miner or a soldier. Empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly. But she wasn't real, just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried, but all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing. Eh, claws, eyes, blood. Cold. Then she said something. Painted red. Painted red. Painted red. Hey, just like the game. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home, and forget about all of this. An obnoxious thing to say four and a half hours into the trip. On the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this. Ooh, it's just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. I'm Nurse Pipe Wrench. Smack him. All right, what have we got in the spooky old asylum? Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Oh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. Insane ghosts in the woods, Marty. Sonny, it's not funny. Insane woods ghosts. Insane ghosts in the woods. Insane son. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. The poor devil. We should go to reception first. Let them know we're here. Let's talk to this nice giraffe oh, nurse. An angel from heaven, isn't she? Yeah, she's yeah, fucking fantastic. Up there, I think. That's rude. Ah, oh, boo-hoo. Of all the great ones. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, miss. Uh, really ma'am. Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Hey, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about... Oh, boy, a fan. And I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. We really... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. Uh, I needed some... Why'd you make me think air. about that, idiot? So, dear detective... Fucking... Santino and Martin. Anti-wax motherfucker. You? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. Rob Schneider, Deuce Bigelow. To answer all of your questions, detectives. 
<laughs> she doesn't even get a face. Police squad? Talk with the super fan nurse. <laughs> Who's this one final mysterious figure? An overly nice nurse we met behind the desk of the asylum. Her name is Miranda, and she's an embarrassingly huge fan of the chicken police. Hey, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. Dr. Quetzal? Seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff, and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Awfully busy he is. He certainly is. Dr. Sensuous? So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho... what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's... Brain stuff. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, oh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. Lady, we drove all this way. Is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. On the phone, you said if we came here, he would talk to us. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. Your bestest friends. I, I can't. Miranda. This case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures, just as we thought. Thank but you, it, it's going to turn out that it's actually Ibn and Albert is taking his brother's place. The only reason you would introduce sudden twin brother is so you could play that switcheroo twist. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. To be fair, I was expecting it more the kind of thing where we got to the asylum and it turned out Ibn was in a straitjacket. He's like, I'm not him, my brother. He sent me, he tied me up. We need to let them know we're here first. Yada yada. Hmm, Golden Corral. Oh, hey. Something in color. This picture. Well, it must have been made by one of the patients, so it's Art understandable. Therapy. It's the handiwork of our director. He's not only a scientist, but he's a great painter, too. I see. Well, it's lovely to have a hobby, right? That's right, Marty. Art heals, doesn't it? Exactly, officers. <laughs> Insane ghosts. Insane ghosts in the woods, yes. 
Well, let's see. Can Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. All right, and to make sure we get all the books so we can see the secret ending, I do have a walkthrough up for those. There's only three left. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared, and we're really, really worried. I see. Huh. We don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great disappeared, you say? Protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. But they feel exactly the same about us. Do reptiles have a body odor? Exactly. Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. We have a you know, pet ball python. He doesn't really smell. smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Walls. Your office is, uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That makes sense. Does this doctor have royalist leanings? More walls. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. But yes, it's like all the others, except there are even bigger ones than this. It, yeah, it sounds like he's trying to do... I can't quite pin it. Vincent Price, maybe, yeah. And we've had a few. Like, you know, Sonny is very clearly going for a Humphrey Bogart thing. Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's the cat was going for a uh, Greta Garbo. And I'm just an animal, too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient. Marty right? is it's just talking. Like I said, he's the one voice actor I'm not thrilled think. with. To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. I like how his tie has a similar snakeskin pattern Please in chunks. Me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle. <laughs> they didn't pay Silvando cash for the Marty performance. I gotta look up what Silvando sounded like. He was Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, uh, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, detective. It's your nurse, the giraffe. She's a big fan of ours. That's weird. Snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. We know you know. It's about Albert Wessler, Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. That's a different word than what's in the text there. More interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has... So much that they should just, like... You are police detectives. I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. Pay me. I'll do one last pass to make sure the voice acting matches the text. And I'll update the text as needed. 
Not even if it's a matter of life and death. To any game devs that hear this. Of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job and I'll do mine. Aha. We can ask questions about Mr. Snake. The professor is really pol polyhister? Polyhister, science writer, philosopher, and who knows what else. He's a green tree python. Might have a bingo, Albert Wesler has disappeared from the asylum. I'm curious, where are we looking on stats? Polyester. Well, let's see. Well, what do we got? We got, yeah, yeah, we're getting close. There's only two more codex entries, and there's... 18 personal informations. Yeah, we're getting close. All right, Dr. Q. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time. His first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. So we locked him in a cold, dark room to make him better. ...that something wasn't right. You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. Royalist scum? What kind of a place is this exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. Your history. Have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes... <laughs> she's an interesting cheese. Oh, I see. Crocodile cheese. Coincidence. Ah, interrogation time for the old snake. Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery, but I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve. 
maybe the first week of the year if was it the bloody new years sleeting that day wind was banging incessantly on the windows the power was going out for short periods of time what was your first impression of them i already knew the wessler name i knew who they were or at least i knew one of them hobart wessler he was famous gangster money lender celebrity lover paintballer ice cream sculpturer an invisible gray ghost the family had tried to keep his existence a secret why because they were ashamed of him of course Mr. and that's how they used to treat that's mental illness what was your first impression of him he was silent but observed everything that surrounded a hundred years ago i'd have been chained in an attic and refused to be let outside never stopped for a second was he afraid I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here alone, locked up. That's assuming I came from a wealthy family, of course. That was the best case scenario. Didn't you think of that as unusual? Of course I did. But who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Yeah, well, I'm a cop and I have a gun. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Mm. Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. Then it turned out he was a blood psychopath and we had to chain him to the wall. <laughs> Do you think he was a threat to others? He didn't seem like that at first. He was fragile, frail, overwrought. I would have labeled him as a threat to himself, but not to others. And later, when you came to know him better, Albert had certain seizures. We found that out quite soon in that surprisingly cold winter. During those times, his personality distorted. He became almost someone else entirely. Almost unrecognizable. Almost, you say. Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? Oh, good. We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a... I can't wait to see how that works. Personality ...who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution. Anybody seen Split? It's just like that. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time. When he was here voluntarily. That's how it works. Wetzel is not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? 
It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. Almost. It was unusual for him. I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened? He'll sleep good tonight? Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting. Aha! Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself, and on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality... Fortunately, he's a rat and I'm a snake, so I ate him. Peace by peace. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject... Exactly. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in Would a... Would perhaps a ram and a bobcat? What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. Whoosh! So, Albert's tongue was torn out, or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely. Yeesh. You're saying Albert was brought back horribly mutilated. Yes. And they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened. They simply told me it was some kind of accident. Dr. Quetzal is cold and professional, but he's also very confused. Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Focus, confused. You didn't believe Albert had an accident, is that right? Of course not. I'm not naive. I knew immediately that Albert had been severely battered, and I was sure it had been his brother, Hobart. Well, we don't know that, Dr. Quetzal. Would you defend a monster? Take it easy, Doc. One of the most critical elements of my job is not to make assumptions. You're absolutely right, Mr. Featherland. I'm sorry I got carried away. You're damn right. right you got carried away. Don't tell me how to do my job. Slither tongue. <clears throat> hmm. What do you think happened? Concentrate, Doctor. What do you think happened to Albert? Where'd he go? I'm sure it was Hobart. He ordered his men to mutilate poor Albert. But why would he do that? Maybe Albert saw something he could accidentally reveal. To whom? The four walls? A couple of crazies? You? To anyone, Mr. Featherland. I don't think it's that simple, Doctor. 
But thank you for your honest opinion. You're welcome, detective. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely, his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. The Unfortunate. Could have killed Albert. It's horrible to say it. But I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. We understand, Doctor. Thank you. I think I know where he might be. Well, Albert Wesley disappeared. We have a hunch what could have happened to him. Ibn most likely killed his own brother, Albert Wessler, and made Zip dispose of the body. That seems the most plausible right now, anyway. The professor's family has governed the mental health facility and its estate for more than a hundred years. Quite a heritage. He's cold, reserved, and endlessly professional in his own field, but the thing that happened to Albert got even a raise out of him. No surprises there. And what do we got down here? We got... Albert's brother, Ibn, took him out of the asylum on several occasions to paint that fateful picture of Natasha. I think we have a motive, gentlemen. They were both in love with the cat. Since its foundation, an attempt to conquer Clawville has only been made once. The half-century occupation started in 622 and lasted until 677. During this time, the Harar Empire took over all Clawville's territories except the colonies, which in the end, with the help of Swalasso and Vlavoslava, took back over control over, 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 Clawville, over. So now what? That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. 
Well, we Are you making fun of me? All of our patients stay as comfortable as possible. Chicken lips? But Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Well, that's uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. It seems that being a Wessler gets you privileges. Like being allowed to scribble all over the damn walls. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... Paint? Ink? Plaster? Some kind of oil? Aging paper? Slight smell of rat? And... Great expectations. My favorite Dickens novel. Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. Sniff. All right, so book. Nope, not my mouse. <laughs> Don't do it with my mouse, you fool. Book number one for a handful of waffles. Starring T Sergeant Meow Meow Fuzzy Face. A you fancy know, bed. I don't think he had it so bad in here. You mean, apart from being separated from everyone you love in an ancient mansion filled with madmen? Eh, you're right. As always. What's this mural? No way! Is this some kind of puzzle? I don't think so. But we could still find something important here. A pattern, a sign, anything. Eyeballs. I don't think I have what I need to a solve small that window. yet. A small hope. A little hope, even. I still have to play those. The style. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for far too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. It is, a little. So this is an original Albert West. So is the implication that he also drew the paintings in the brothel? I must say, and I saw something very similar in Natasha's room. You kept me out of it. Sorry, little boy. Maybe next time. Unfortunately, all the corners are still intact. Whew, it's hot in here. Okay, Marty, that's enough. Whew, okay. Marty, you irascible horn dog, you. Oh, jeepers. All right, we have a lot going on. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Funny how that works. Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird. Well, for once, I'm with Marty, I guess. Look at that. A letter. What's it say? Read it. Scribbles. Newspaper articles. Study papers. Poems. Perfect chaos. Just like the troubled mind of a troubled fella. In a troubled world at a troubled desk. It's just too intricate for you to comprehend. If you say so, boss. Anything else around here? No. Nothing. Not a... Yeah, right. Let's see. I, I know I don't exist. I don't exist because you don't see me, but I'm not what you think I am. You don't think about me, do you? Never? No, I think about you. Every day, every minute, always. In my dreams, I have become one with him, one soul. You know who I am thinking about, right? Can you feel it? Can you feel that I'm there too? With you. Do you feel it, right? 
I can't hold it in myself for long. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, please. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. The world is crashing down. The whole world just rotting and rotting. Everything is rotting around me. I have to get out of here to become one with my destiny and one with you. Forgive me. Albert was madly in love with Natasha and would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. Identical twins. What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon. Why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden? If I'm right, this'll flip the whole case upside down. Flippity flop. What's that, Sonny? A blurb from some horrible novel? I just have to think things through before I come to any hasty conclusions, Marty. Ugh, you're killing me. So, what now? Where to? Back to Clawville, where we can finally put all the pieces together. <sighs> You're driving me <laughs> crazy. But alright, let's go home. Yeah, so... Marty was in love with Natasha, and it looks like he pulled a, a single white female on his brother. Or a, uh, talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, the game still hasn't acknowledged the switcheroo yet. Okay, fine. What can you tell us about the woman in the photo we saw in Albert's room? Do you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko? Well, yes. I don't know much about her, but everyone heard her name and her voice around here. There's she also the part where she's the princess. Never. But if you ask me, Natasha probably didn't even know Albert was a resident of our institution. And Albert, did he mention her often? Constantly. It was obvious he had an affection for Miss Katsenko, but I wouldn't have thought for a moment he could escape because of her. I wouldn't jump ahead, Doctor. Something else could be behind Albert's disappearance. Do you think so? All the signs clearly indicate this. Maybe they do, Doctor, but in my line of work, logic's not always the best advisor. In 99% of cases. Exactly. But this one typically belongs to the remaining 1%. If you say so. So, detectives, have you found what you were looking for? I'm afraid we have, Doctor. And more. I wouldn't dare to say I'm happy to hear it, but I'm glad to be of service to you. Well, service. Doc, I hope I don't offend you by saying I hope we're not going to meet any time soon. <laughs> not on account of either of our jobs, am I right? Exactly. Hi. I forgot I have a zoom button. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop. Okay. Farewell, Miranda, dear. Lovely to meet you. So, you'll remember my name? Marty McChicken never forgets, ma'am. Oh. Just ask Laszlo. Furry gods. Leonard. Hello. Goodbye, miss. Lamar. Goodbye, gentlemen. And happy investigating. I'm sure it'll be fun. If there's anything I can help you with, please just ask. Actually, there's something high up on a shelf if you wouldn't, um... You've already helped enough. Back to the city, I suppose. Oh, I don't believe this. Those two again? God! Take them out. Damn it last much longer don't worry sonny i was born to do this all right i'm 
getting shot. Oh, God, I'm almost dead. I'm dead. Man, I wish I could just shoot the damn cat. Oh, and when I hide, the car takes damage. Great. are very bulletproof wheels tires spinny go roundies well that was close a little too close for my taste and it only strengthens my belief Wessler is desperate he knows if we survive he's done for well, come on what did you work out will you tell me already sure let's put the picture together piece by piece all right policine time Let's start from the beginning. So, we got a case. We got this nice... Oh, where's the nice deer lady? What about the photo? Nope. What about... Oh. Nope. The painting? Needed to destroy the painting? No. She wanted us to find it. No. She tried to show it to us. She tried to, show us the painting. she tried to show it to us. She wanted us to find it. Jesus Christ. Because of Albert. And that painting would have shown us the way. Corpse of Albert Wesley. No. To Ibn and Albert Wesley. Albert. Well, we'd already known Ibn. So he met her on more than what one occasion. Fun. And they fell in love. Which made Albert. And on a fateful night, he killed his brother so he could take his place in secret and win Natasha's heart. Bam. But what about the so what the messages? Now? The inevitable, Marty. We're going to the Wessler Mansion to confront Ibn with the facts. You mean Albert? You mean Albert, right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, Natasha. But what about all the the horror and the bricks through the windows? Thanks, Marty. The whole case seems too intricate. Hmm. Too many coincidences, right? Well, well. After ten years, you did learn something, didn't you? Nine. <laughs> How was the brothel and the huh. crocodile lady involved? You just laughed, Sonny. What? No, I. I don't laugh. Chickens never laugh. No, you I'm not a laugher. I just leave it, Marty. <laughs> I'll be telling this to my grand chicks. <laughs> All right. One time, this old fuck that you never met was so miserable, but he did laugh once. So, Al 
Albert fell madly in love with Natasha and decided to have her for himself. And his best chance was to trade places with Ibn Wessler. So that's why the torn out tongue. Yeah, Ibn couldn't squeal even if he wanted to. What a diabolical plan. More like insane. Full of diaboles, I tells you. Messages then. Why the threats? Albert got what he wanted. He could have got away with it. I'm not a psychologist, Marty, but remember what the doctor told us. Albert has a seriously injured mind and a split personality. I think his two identities were at war with each other. Mm, I guess I would explain why he didn't handle the by case. One of his personalities consumed by jealousy? Something like that, Marty. But we can only learn the whole truth from him. You're right. Sure. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll are buy we going or what? We're going, Marty, to finally finish what we started. Well, if there's anything you'd like to do before, do it now, boss. You won't have a chance later. You're right, Marty. It's time to wrap everything up. Oh, hey, you. Hey, Lewis. How many favors do we owe you? All night because of us, were you? What? I've never been this excited, Sonny. Seriously, it is a great honor to be part of the team. What is it? You, Lewis. You don't stutter anymore. What? Just now, you you didn't stutter. Not even a little. Oh, I m m m m must be exhausted. Damn it, Sonny, you brought attention to it. And it's b b back. So, uh... Martin, again, you dick. You always get us out of trouble. Come on, b b boys. Don't even m m mention it. It is me who is grateful to be a b part of an adventure of the ch ch chicken police. Maybe the last one, too. Hey, Sonny. Don't spoil his mood. He's so cute. B b pardon me. Nothing. Nothing. Albert is Ibn Wessler. The madman took his brother's place and is trying to tie up loose ends. If we don't catch him now, maybe it'll be too late. That flea bag tried to do away with us for the third time. Unsuccessfully, of course. I hope there's not going to be a fourth attempt. All right. So. One last thing we gotta do before we head over yonder. Well, if we have anything else to ask the old beaver, this is the last chance. Hey, don't steal my style. Just learning from the best. Let me give you some advice. Don't. Don't do it. Oh, look what I found. Furry gods, another chicken police story. And one of my favorites, too. Meredith outdid herself when she wrote this one. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, Sonny, you could read one one day. They're not as bad as you think. If it's about me and you, then I want none of it, thanks. Reality's more than enough. You're still mad. That woman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nothing. Maybe once I'm retired, I'll read. Where is... Bottom left. There it is. All right, old man. Does the name Albert mean anything to you? I know multiple Alberts, Sonny. Which one do you mean? Albert Wessler. I see you're in a funny mood, Sonny boy. I'm not joking, Mullen, but I'm surprised there's something I know and you don't. Hmm. I, and who is this Albert, anyway? Ibn Wessler's hidden son, maybe? Even better, my friend. His secret twin brother. Oh, oh, you've walked into trouble there. I was hoping you could tell me something useful about it. I, I can, Sonny boy. Avoid them. Avoid the whole Wessler family. Those who happen upon secrets that deep sink without a trace. 
Well, I used to be a professional swimmer, didn't you know? No. I can swim real good for a chicken. What do you know about that asylum? Uh, what's it called? Since there's only one of those around Clawville, I know which one you mean, Sonny. It's an ancient mansion, easily around a hundred years old, for sure. Or more. But what do you want to know about it, anyway? We about his actually just got out of there. <laughs> that explains everything. Seriously, what do you know about it? The place is self-sufficient in theory, but in reality... Oh, maybe the crazy brother had the same one committed. No, no, yeah, maybe, maybe. Why, but according to gossip, they used to keep someone in there. Someone who was either part of the royal family or just very close to the fire. But who knows? Maybe it's just a legend? Well, they say we're legends, too, and we're standing right in front of you. That's possible. What can I say, then? <laughs> this whole city is full of legends. There's only one way to find Find out. We gotta take it to the rat himself. Which is somewhere around here. Maybe I gotta talk to Marty. So, we're looking for more evidence? No, I was just thinking we could take another look. You know, just in case. Mm, okay, sure. But don't even ask, Marty. You're really becoming sentimental. One more word, and I swear I'm... Yep, I'm gonna shut it. Let's see. Oh, they probably want us to go back to the hotel. Should I say it? I know, Sonny. I can still get out. But you won't. On the beak. Thanks, pal. Forget about it. I'd be bored to death otherwise. You know, pulling the trigger was the toughest decision of my life. You mean when you shot me? Yeah. But it wasn't hard, because you thought you'd kill me. Not at all, Sonny. I knew you'd survive. I wanted it to be a permanent injury and hurt like clucking hell. But I knew that everything would change from then on. That something was going to break between us? Yeah. And that I was never going to be the same either. With that shot, I also gunned down who I was, you know? It really did hurt like hell. I know. I almost bled to death. Almost was the goal. And? Did you manage to forgive me since then? Well, what hurt me wasn't what you did. I mean, of course it did, but what hurt the most was you not trusting me. That you didn't believe me. Not until you pulled the trigger. At that moment, I knew you were right. Ah, uh, cluck. Yeah, cluck. Cluck indeed, boys. All right, enough sentimental crap. We have an insane rat waiting to be put behind bars and a woman you gotta get. What? Come on, Sonny. Even a blind bat can see it. Oh, well. Clock again. Yep. What do we got there? Achievement unlocked. Talk to Marty about the case that separated the chicken police. be nowhere without you partner more than likely at the bottom of the river times all right so how do we progress with the damn story pork yeah there was uh i think there was a joke in the first episode about um the turtle and the elephants and yeah they've they've had uh they've had a handful so where the fuck let me see where 
seven. Where is he? What am I supposed to do? Game, where do you want me to go? Well, let's see. Checked out that. And that. Eh, hey, sorry, bear. No hard feelings? What can I say, boys? I have a big, soft heart. You sure do, Ursula. Meet you the nicest. I would, in Thanks, we just came to say goodbye. Why? You going somewhere? Traveling? I uh, know, we're just uh, visiting a, uh, a nice place in the city. Sonny's gonna die. Shut up, Marty. So it's a case. Well, be careful, boys. And I'm sorry I snapped at you the last time. It's okay. Please don't eat us. You're a bear and scary. You're a good boy, Sonny. And Marty's a downright saint. Oh, come on, Ursula. Stop that. All's right in the world again. Ursula's back, and Bubo's still a grumpy, insufferable old owl. The balance of the universe is restored. It seems Ursula found her way back to Bubo. What can I say? Love is a murderous beast. Well, uh, let's see. All I got left is the hop dog. Ah, you know, Sonny, few... The Explorer visited all the limited locations. You have a point. The silence, the fog, the sunshine slowly devouring the sleeping city. The smell. Yeah, the cobbler district has its own distinctive aroma, that's for it Smells sure. like peaches. But wait, do you smell that? Ah, it seems Zip is ready with the first batch of coffee. That's waiting only for us, my friend. Yeah, let's go get that cup of coffee. Well, hey, Zip. he's out. He's brave indeed, or an idiot. They're often the same, Marty, and you should know. <laughs> Coffee me. Hello, Zip. I see they kicked you out. You don't know, Sonny. They told me I could stay in there for 48 hours if I wanted. Well, maybe you should have done that. Shit, I had enough. Fuck it. You understand? When you interrogated me, you opened my eyes. I don't give a shit about him, about Wessler and his henchmen. Let them come if they want. It's not going to be easy for them. You can be sure of that. That's the zip we know and love. Thanks, Marty. So, uh, why are you here? One last coffee before the end. Are you going to get him? We don't have a choice, Zip. We're grabbing the rat by the tail. No screwing around. No playing at night. Ah, I see Ibn's really got to you. Just Sonny. I'm like this all the time. Yeah, that's true. And what do you expect will happen when you get there? They'll either let us in, or we'll blow open the doors and go in guns blazing. How hard can it be? Well, I'm not sure you know what you're up against, boys, but it's your funeral. I'm just glad I got to know the legendary chicken police. Now, hey, look at that. Hey, 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 don't write us off yet. Maybe it was from when he got you're shot. Getting ready for all possibilities, Marty. Hey, chicken coppers. Yeah, Zip? Take care of your feathers for me, okay? <laughs> Will do, Zip. Don't worry. I'll protect this smelly old bird. It says I'm supposed to go to the Wessler Residency. Where the fuck is that? I'm not seeing it on the menu or on the map here.
appearing on the map. Yeah, it sounds like it should just be on the map. But it's not. <laughs> you don't want to go in there just like that. It's a closed crime scene. I hope you're just messing with me, Marty. Of course I'm messing with you. Let's get inside there and see how much the boys have messed up the place. Browning Auto 5, you really need to clean the fuck out of that after the dip in the river. Well, oh, Sonny. when we entered the room and saw the girl, Deborah. Yeah, her body. Hmm. I called you every name in the book inside my head. I just had enough, you know? I wanted to quit. What kept you with me? Was it just curiosity? No. I just wanted to see your downfall, boss. I wanted to be there when you met your end, get humiliated or even shot. Wow. Well, thanks for your honesty, Marty. But then everything changed on the ship. On the ship? Why there? I don't know. Being tied up with you, waiting for certain death. I know I lashed out at you, but in truth, I felt there was no place I'd rather be. It was my place on that fucking burning ship with you, even if we both died there. Burning I ship. I think I do, Monty. I think I do. So, I guess there's nowhere to go but forward, huh? Nothing left to do but kill a rat. As the chicken police. For the last time? For the last clucking time, partner. Swear? I swear. All right. Let's hit the road. Shadows from the Past, Part 1. Talk to Marty about his feelings before confronting Wessler. I'd love to. A lot of the walkthroughs I'm finding end after chapter three. It seems Marty was only playing stupid for a long time to see how the mighty Santino Featherland falls down. To be honest, I understand him and I think I deserved it. says can I go maybe I didn't talk to these two enough so, so you're going now to confront Mr. W w w Wester? we have no other choice Lewis we're gonna see it through to the end we've already come this far you're brave gentlemen I'm honestly impressed 
Well, the rabbits are to something. This isn't about money. Not about courage or pride either. It's simply... Stubbornness? Mostly, yeah. Well, good luck, guys. Thanks, Lewis. We could use some luck, that's for sure. Well, thanks, Lewis. Look, Sonny, I think if we go... I'm still thinking about it, Marty. Oh, for fuck's sake. There we are. We got to get him to repeat the point of no return warning. Once wasn't enough. A fancy mansion somewhere at the end of the world. You just have to own one if you're a billionaire gangster. Yeah. All right, Eben. Or Albert. Whatever the fuck your name is. The sun was shining and all the ducks were in a row. I felt ready. They were practicing their synchronized swimming class. The puzzle were laid out on the table. I just needed to piece them all together. A revealing glance or a careless word, and I'd have the answer. I knew we were in the right place. I knew it was nearly over. I knew I needed to get my car looked at after all the bullet holes. Or did she know everything? Was she controlling the puppets from behind the curtain? Well, if you don't know where to go, go straight ahead. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? city is in his hands, Marty, and half the Council of Twelve. I think we'll catch a big fish today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Wessler's expecting us, and Natasha too, I hope. You hope? If I'm right, she could be our only chance of survival. Lovely prospects, huh? I've had worse. Really? Oh, jeez. Oh, look, a rat knight. Huh, one of Wessler's ancestors, maybe. Wessler's ancestors were poor cobblers. More likely, this represents what he thinks of himself. I wonder how chivalry is compatible with organized crime. Eben was planning to leave the underworld. When Plant himself up next to a red wall. Poked out his eye, killed him, and took his place. Yeah. Gruesome. Is this a mansion or a grand palace? Well, if it Oops. comes to hide and seek, old Wessler will have an advantage. A serious advantage. Hey, not so fast, chickens. Please excuse my partner. He didn't mean to be rude, it's just his uh, terrible habits, as you may already know. From the times he tried to shoot you with a Tommy gun twice. Look what the cat dragged in. Meow. I don't recognize them. Well, maybe if they had some guns with them? Tommy guns? Oh, yeah. Now I remember. The two suckers in the luxury van you shot to pieces. Twice. Exactly. <sighs> what are you doing here, chickens? Would you like us to finish what we started? We'd love to have fun with you boys, but we need to talk to your boss. And while we're at it, the lady of the house is also expecting us. Is that so? Yeah, that's so horny. Hey! I guess there's no reason for oh, you meant the thing. Is that right, Gabriel? Oh, get the hell out of our sight while there are still feathers on your skin, chickens. Easy, pal. We're not being paid to kill you today. Until next time, boys. This must lead to Wessler and Natasha's suite. Let's get the big guns out and kick the door down. No need for that, Marty. We'll wait until they invite us in, like real gentlemen. Then maybe we'll need the guns. But I hope it won't come to that. 
Oh, my trigger finger's itching, Sonny. Someone's got Sonny, I just, I gotta murder someone, Sonny. I got a lust for blood that must be quenched. Yeah, just don't let it be us. Ah, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Olivia. Sweetie. Get lost. Uh, what did you say, ma'am? Turn around and get the hell out of here now, if you want to make it out with feathers intact. <laughs> Come on, Olivia. Don't worry about us. We know it. With her little gay fingernail painting. Huh? Don't you get it? You have I wonder if that's meant to be something about the character, or if it's just the actress who did the hand modeling and nobody like did anything about it. Doctor Mr. Wessler and Miss Katsenko. Or if it has a different connotation from you know the forties. Oh, hey, look, there she is. What do they not understand, Olivia? So. What is it exactly that our guests don't understand? Yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> this whole NFT boom, I don't quite get it. Guests early. He gets rather irate if he's being disturbed at this hour. I'm sure Mr. Featherland and Mr. McChicken can wait here while Ibn refreshes himself. I'll entertain them until then. Thank you, Miss uh, Gitsenko. Please, Sonny. I thought we've already discussed this. Call me Natasha. Uh, <clears throat> sure. Please, Natasha, can we talk to you in private? Martin, it's all right, Olivia. These gentlemen are my friends. Yes, Miss Katzenko. All right. Let's go talk to the cat. The truth is... Ibn isn't really in a good shape today, gentlemen. He's rather furious. Are you sure this can't wait? You commissioned us, Natasha, and we barely escaped with our combs intact. So you know who left the threats? I do. Oh, we know much more than that, Natasha. We even know where you used to work. We talked to Madame Savas. Wild gods! Why didn't you tell us? Do you think it's easy for a woman to talk about such things that she used to be an escort? Along with Molly? So you know. Yeah, I know, Natasha. I also know all of this was a trap. Believe me, I tried to handle things the least painfully I could. You weren't even supposed to know. A lot shouldn't have happened. Poor Deborah shouldn't have had to die. Dear sweet Deborah. Cold, stiff Deborah. Please don't say that. A price worth paying? You cannot think I had anything to do with that. You just cannot. I don't know. I mean, you might have. I don't know. Please, Sonny, tell me what is going on. You have to know, right? Please. Excuse me for making you wait, detectives. I'm having a rough morning after a long night. Is that so? Our night was also kind of long, to put it mildly. I was just telling the gentlemen that you were exhausted, my dear, and they should come back another time. I'll escort them out. Oh, honey, no need for that. My door is always open to the legendary chicken police. Please, come on in, guys. Let's start talk in my room. Then this way, please. You just stay here, my darling. I'm sure our conversation will bore you to death. Please, go and refresh yourself or uh, tell Olivia to go make some coffee. Yes, dear. Coffee it is. you like. Please, follow me, gents. Follow me, motherfucker. So long, sweetheart. There it is. And book number 10 is right here. Apparently he was reading about us. All right, that is what unlocks the secret ending. The rest of the collectibles, I'll get on my own time for anything I missed. Oh look, the painting. And hey, the corner of the painting. This painting, it's beautiful and rather provocative. Almost makes my comb stand up. I'm not surprised. But the corner is missing. You're right, Sonny. 
You're quite the observer. Well, yeah. This painting's unfortunately damaged. I don't know where the missing piece could be. You don't know? Well, if you're interested, we know exactly where it is. In my pocket! Really? It's here with us. An insignificant little piece, isn't it? But there's an exciting cat scratch on it. More like a rat scratch, because it's a monogram. A.W. That's Albert Wessler. He's a great painter. I don't know if you've heard of him. Enough. Out with it already. What are you trying to say? I have no time for your childish charades. Easy, Wessler. We'll get to that in a bit. Where's the... It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure. Yeah, you can definitely see the W. Of course, I can't use the zoom here, but I'm guessing that little red squiggle here is the A. Impressive bed. Looks cozy. Sure is better than a cell. That's right, Marty. I don't want a big fancy we'll king bed. All right, buddy boy. So, uh, what do you want to know? I've heard you've been through the social type. Talk with all the characters. Oh, look at that. Oh, you have rather good informants. Yeah, that's true. I should tell you, I see and hear everything that happens in the city. And you, uh, you are exceptionally resilient. No offense. I've tried to kill you so many times. Tell me, are we going to flatter each other for a long time? Or are we finally done with the courting? Straight to the point. I like it. Yeah. So let's continue like that, shall we? What do you want? How dare you intrude upon me in my own house? How dare you guys? Our moral compass has been confused a little bit after someone tried to kill us several times in the last 48 hours. With fire, with machine guns, I could go on. With more machine guns. Well, That's basically it. Answer some of our questions. If you've nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And then we'll just leave you alone. All right. I'll go along with your childish little game. I would have had a long and tedious day ahead of me anyway. So, can we start? Excuse me. With pleasure, Mr. Wessler. All right, let's do it. I have no idea what she sees in you, but Natasha's been seriously worried about you. Yeah, she, uh really worries more than usual, but it's understandable. Those disgusting messages. Disgusting, all right. Do you know why that word exactly? Why did they write that specific word everywhere? Who could come since, up with a reason? Since uh, you've been to the Nile, I guess you know the answer to your question. Didn't it bother you, Wessler, what Natasha used to do? Surely it must have upset you. Why? Did it upset you when you discovered your wife did the same thing? What did you just say? What did you think, chicken? That I didn't know? Yeah, don't make me laugh. I know about everyone who ever set foot in that place. I can even tell you who Molly's regulars were, if you're interested. You son of a bitch. Sonny, don't. Famous chicken growling. Not yet. Growling like chickens do. It's not worth it. You're funny, you know that? About the painting. Yeah. My brother Albert made it. He's a great talent, but uh, still, uh, he's a rather troubled individual. Such self-criticism. What did you say? My partner means that you and your brother are very much alike. Identical twins, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed. But, uh, what does that have to do with the painting? We'll get to that. Don't worry, Mr. Wessler. So Albert made the painting at your request, is that right? And the one that's in Natasha's room in the Tsar, too. Yeah, exactly. Is that a crime? No, it's not a crime in itself. I got this photograph. This picture, it's rather strange. You know? Take a look at this photograph. 
It's just mean. That- Every time I do it makes me want to rip out my brother's tongue and poke out his eye. Yes. But if you already have the right information, suddenly it starts to talk. Really? He fell in love with her, didn't he? Who'd you mean? Albert, of course. He fell in love with Natasha. All those sessions while he was painting the pictures. Were you there every time? Uh, maybe. You. No. I mean, while Albert was painting, yeah, but I wasn't there all the time. Albert was there all along. Every single one. He could have fallen in love with Natasha. That's why he escaped. What do you think happened to him? Who tore out his tongue? I have no idea. Did Natasha know about what happened to your brother? No, of course not. Do you love beautiful things, Wesler? I, eh, uh, why do you ask that? Yeah, of course. You were afraid of losing her, weren't you? To him. I feel like that was a weird question to throw in the middle of that. Ask something, ask clearly. Don't play with me, you understand? We're just doing our job. And do it clearly. And quickly. Yeah, I'm really starting to lose my patience. Have you ever gone bicycling? We visited Albert's cell and found something he seems to have uh, forgotten to take with him in his great hurry. That's a big mistake. This chicken police novel. What the hell are you babbling about? This is Albert Wessler's love letter to Natasha. More like a confession. In which he tells her he's capable of doing anything for her. Even the most horrible things. The worst things. This letter doesn't prove anything at all. Albert is mad. Insane. He's not a normal. No one would believe his word. Don't you understand? But they believe yours, right? Because you're not Albert Wessler. You're Hobart Ibn Wessler, aren't you? How good it feels to be in his skin. How dare you? Just tell him, Sonny. I'm getting tired of this. You're just a cheap fake, Albert. You couldn't follow in your brother's footsteps even if you wanted to. No matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get Natasha either. Am I right? What? What did you just say? She hates you, doesn't she? She doesn't know. She doesn't understand why. But she hates you. It's instinctive. You creepy rat boy. What could you possibly know about suffering and loneliness and the darkness? What could you know about hate? Huh? Couple of things you don't know. Time to get to it. Ah, he's got a gun. Albert is an imposter. He's not who he says he is and might not even know who he really is. I have to concentrate on this first to soften him up and to avoid us being shot in the gizzard, of course. What were you thinking, Albert? How long did you think you could keep it up? Until the end of my life, if needs. Yeah, I cared about nothing except for her to love me. Not for who Ibn was, but for who I am. Why did you think that would happen? Everybody noticed the change. Yeah, I knew it would be hard, Santino. But I also knew animals see what they want to see. Yeah, I didn't have to behave like Ibn. They only had to believe I'm him. Decide to take your brother's place. Yeah, as you're curious. From the moment I laid eyes on Natasha for the first time. But I had to convince myself that this was the only way. You've never talked about your feelings for Natasha with your brother. Am I right? Are you insane? Yeah, Abel would have had me killed immediately. And no one would ever know. So instead, you've done the same thing, haven't you? What a comfortable excuse. Comfortable? Do you think all of this was just some kind of cruel game for me? I had to destroy the person I loved and respected the most. 
Try me. That doesn't seem very nice. You know, there's only a thin, fragile membrane between love and hate. If anything touches it, it tears immediately. You've felt like this before, haven't you? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You can analyze me until the sun goes down, Wessler. But you won't get far with that. Yeah, evasive answer. So I'm right. Why did you have to mutilate Ibn? Why didn't you just kill him immediately? That's an interesting question, you see, but the, the answer is exceptionally simple. No matter how strange it is for you to understand, I loved my brother. Weird way of showing you love, Albert. You can't understand that. He was my everything, the only one who was close to me. Until I met Natasha. She took your brother's place pretty quickly, didn't she? There's not much room in your heart as I see it. Yeah, you're understanding the situation, detective. But you know, uh, very well it's not that simple. Ibn was my brother. I loved him despite all of his flaws and foul, petty lies. And that's why I couldn't kill him. Not immediately, you mean? Unfortunately, tearing out his tongue wasn't enough. Yeah, I must admit I've uh, underestimated him. And poking out his eye? Oh, uh, that was just an accident, Mr. Featherland. Just an accident? You're a dirty, clucking son of a vermin, Albert. Wait a sec, don't be vulgar, Sonny. It's too dangerous in your current situation and doesn't even suit you. So you feel you're two people at the same time, even now. Does it sound crazy? Maybe it is. But it lives inside me. Sometimes he's even stronger than Albert ever was. Do you think you can avoid the gas chamber with this, Albert? Eh, I don't have to avoid anything, Sonny. You and your friend uh, will never leave this place. It's better if you start getting used to the thought. You're not the cold-blooded killer you'd like to think you are. Yeah, do you think so? Try me, detective. Hmm. What would you have done if Natasha found out? Kill her, too? You know what? Maybe, yeah. Maybe I would have ended myself, too. Well, all right. Pricks like you never commit suicide, Albert. Yeah. Are you sure you want to insult someone who's pointing a revolver at your stomach, detective? That was your plan. Take his place and live happily ever... Ah, uh, the hand with the gun is shaking. Isn't it good enough of a plan, Mr. Featherland? It was perfect. Even in its imperfection. Which is? Ibn's ghost. His... his what? Uh, please huh? don't take it literally, Mr. Chicken. I'm not talking about the uh, spirits. When Ibn died, I didn't just take his place, but also his role. He himself, uh, his essence, if you will. Yeah, though I guess that's uh, too much for you to understand. So you mean Ibn's here with us even now? Is Ibn talking to you? All along. Don't you get it? I am Hobart Ibn Wessler. I must get serious, because looking at the gun in Wessler's trembling hand, I'm afraid I don't have much time. Albert is a cruel psychopath, but maybe I can turn that cruelty against him. Hmm. When was the moment you decided to kill him, Albert? When I drew the last stroke on that fatal painting, Mr. Fiddleland. When I glanced at it for the last time, and then at Natasha, who was shivering under the weight of my gaze. Also because she was very cold. Love with her. End of story. Not in the slightest, Mr. Fiddleland. Love is, uh, just chemistry. What I felt was more than that. Everybody thinks that, Albert. But we all feel the same. We're just fools. No, Mr. Featherland. Not at all. At that moment, I knew what I was going to do. I knew that the world was coming to an end if I didn't do it. It implodes on itself and ceases to exist. 
I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't. Let him have her, right? You simply wanted her for yourself. I wanted her for ourselves, Sonny. I was him by then. He just didn't know it yet. Let's be mean. Think you can explain everything with your insanity. Don't be a fool, Sonny. Insanity is just a temporary state, just a stop on the way to enlightenment. Oh, is that how that works? Admit you're insane. That's surprising for your kind. Of course, I'm not insane. Ah, oh, well, here we are. Albert was insane. He lost all connections to reality. But I saved him. You mean, your Gibbon? Both of us, Mr. Featherland. Okay. I almost understand everything now. Don't mock me, Mr. Featherland. You're still at the wrong end of a gun, you remember. It would be hard to forget. All right, I'm getting back up. Did you hate Eben or yourself more, Albert? Albert hated himself the most ever since he was born. He, uh, he idolized Eben. But every time his brother stood before him, he saw what he could have been himself if he had enough strength. But he didn't. Albert had always been a coward, a, a pitiful nobody. And now... Finally, there's no more Albert, and no more Eben either. It's only me, and for both of them, I'm perfect. Can it be that the fear is making you say these things, Albert? Stop calling me that. I have to call you something. What should I call you? What name should I use? Um, I, I don't know any more. I, I don't. I'm very close to breaking him. But if I'm too hard on him, I could quickly be signing my death warrant. I'll call you... No, I can't call you Bosco. We already have a Bosco. I'll call you... Mr. Jingles. Natasha was kind to you, right? Too kind. Natasha was a... Simply amazing, gentle, kind, lively, but still so uh, distant. You're telling me. It's like she was from another world. A world where everything's full of charm and grace and everything's fragile and delicate. Uh, so mysterious. I think I do, yes. I knew Albert's touch would harm her. Albert is rough. Albert can't keep such a delicate thing in his arms. That's why you had to become Ibn, am I right? I didn't take Ibn's place, Mr. Featherland. I became one with him, can't you see? It's the only way I could comprehend and accept the miracle that was Natasha. Was? I... I think I've corrupted her. She's not that gentle and pure creature I painted on the canvas anymore. I ruined her. Oh no. Rotten under my hands. Maybe it's not too late, Albert. Tell her the truth and end this. No. You can't understand this. She can't either. I killed Eben, but he also killed me. Can't you see? We're nothing without each other. You can't be two people at the same time, Albert. Nobody can bear the weight of the sins of two souls. Ibn loved her. Nobody. Not even a little bit. Ibn was crazy about her. I've been crazy for a long time. Ibn idolized her, and I hated her. And if there's anything more blind, more devoted, more extreme, and more true than love, it could only be hate, Mr. Featherland. It's an endlessly exciting, thrilling, and warm feeling, and infinitely red, just like love. So red. Everything's red. Go through with it, right? Then you won't be able to carry the weight, but you still did it. Why? Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it, you rat bastard? Albert would have died, Mr. Featherland. 
And the threats? Which one of you was that? Albert or Ivan? Who wrote them? And which one of you killed Deborah? In my world, Ivan and I are inseparable. Just like love and hate are one and the same. And I hate Natasha so much that I could destroy myself along with her, just so she would die with me. Are you familiar with this feeling, Mr. Featherland? No. Maybe. You see? Maybe Sonny is. so different after all. You, you sound like a fucking lunatic. You know why? Why, Mr. Featherland? Because if I were in your shoes, I would have pulled the trigger a long time ago. Goodbye, Sonny. So long, Albert. Bang! Oh no. Sherlock Holmes? Oh, I fucked up. I fucked that one up bad. Finish the game with zero failed quest. Okay, I didn't fail. But I feel like I'm gonna get shot now. The cat killed the rat. What a twist. So, you heard everything. I heard everything. Everything? I had to find out like this. And thank you. If it weren't for you... Yes, both of you would be dead, I know. But believe me, I still thought carefully before firing. About who to target? You know... Ibn. But this man wasn't him. You felt it, didn't you? Maybe I even knew it. I don't know. But I still can't believe it. It won't be easy to process for any of us. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. And regarding Molly... I love how the beak is still flapping while the cop noise is going on. I am like Sonny makes those sounds himself. Do not look at me. I did not call them. It was Olivia. Don't worry, Natasha. They won't lay a finger on you. I promise. Please, Sonny. You don't need to worry about me. I don't want to be... I'm a royal. We don't pay for crimes. Hello, boss. Hello, boys. Now, before you say anything... Monica, what are you doing here? No need for that, San Gino. Monica already told me everything. Hold that thought. The dame with a loaded gun. Where the fuck is it? There we go. Get to the point where Natasha kills Albert Wessler. All right. We got to that point. Sure did. Hey, boys. What were you thinking? That I would just let you get killed without saying goodbye? Thanks, Mom. Maybe. Should we say we uh, owe you one? You know already, boys. Shoes are my weakness. Hey, mine too. Of all that's furry, we don't want to hear that. Size 35, black heels. Uh, yes, Mom. No, no more description than that. with it so easily. I want a report on my desk from Empress will judge you if they're ugly. All the details. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It'll all make sense, believe us. Right after I figure out myself what the hell just happened. What Marty's trying to tell you is that we had good reason to investigate outside the law. But we're sorry. What happened to you, Sonny? You're sorry? Did you hit your head? Why does everybody keep asking that? Why indeed? So can we go now, boss? Without getting handcuffed? Don't give me ideas, Santino. I didn't do shit. You can't handcuff me. Thanks, boss. I'm not guilty. The rat did it. Farewell, my lovely. Complete chapter. Clues. 
Natasha saved our lives at the last minute once Albert had revealed everything. So there we go. But is it really over? Natasha tried to send us away from the estate, but why? Was she worried about us? Did she have a different motive? In the end, she was the one who pulled the trigger and saved us. But of course, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have been in this situation in the first place. Monica knew what we were up to and informed the boys just in time. If not for her, Wesley's goons would have mostly riddled us with bullets. Most likely riddled us. You know what I meant. God damn it. An old man's small hairy heart softened in the end, and all it took was the downfall of a gangster empire. What about you? Olivia tried to shoo us out of the Wesley Mansion. Strange, but she seemed quite worried about us. This motherfucker. Albert honestly believes he and Ibn Wessler are one and the same. Two souls and one body. I don't even know what to think about the madness, but one thing is without question. Albert is a vicious beast, and he has to go down no matter what. He would have done anything to prevent a secret from emerging. But it was too late. Natasha felt something wasn't right with him, and Albert knew he couldn't get away with it. It's simple. Deadly simple. Let's see how he did with the stats. All right, all right. We're missing two personal informations, one codex. A handful of gallery entries, but there's time to come. Thanks again, Mon. If not for you, those fur heads would have put holes in us. Fur heads? That sounds like a slur. Well, actually, that wasn't us. Then who was it? Natasha. Really? Hmm. I wouldn't have thought it of her. It's a pleasant surprise. It was for us, too. Believe me. What? Are you waiting for me to change my mind? Maybe. No, you don't know. Then stop pecking around here. Yes, sir. So, what now? Where to next? I think I should mourn, right? Yep, that's you what people should. do. But I don't know what to feel anymore, Sonny. I understand, Natasha. You know, if you need anything... Yes, I know where to find you. See you around, sweetheart. Ma'am? Goodbye, detectives. How the hell did you find your way here, Tim? Always where the trouble is. Sometimes I think you're the criminal mastermind behind all the dark dealings in this city. That's the final twist. Timothy is Blofeld. Because then we could legally throw you in jail. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Sonny. <laughs> I wasn't joking. I really hate you, Tim. Where did you get the scoop? Are you kidding me? The whole city's talking about you. You've left quite the mess behind. That, I admit. Well, it's a miracle that all of the city smear sheet journalists aren't here already. Oh, while we're at it, will you give me an exclusive interview? Will you? Hey! All right. What do you want from Look us? Look at all these plants. It's like nature's claiming back what's hers. Yeah, amazing. Strange how someone so rotten inside, like Wessler, can still dream something so beautiful to surround himself with. How do we get out of this joint? Santino. You do no, sir. Never, sir. Then get the fuck out of here. I'm trying. I don't know how. Barking dogs never bite. Disturb blood boils peace at least three times. I'd love to get out of here. The map is grayed out. I can't use it. <laughs> no, 
know, maybe we gotta have more conversation with you. And what about you, Sonny? I'll go home and sleep. Maybe for three days. I'll try to forget. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. If there's anything I can do. Fabulous riches wouldn't hurt. Natasha, it's better this way. We find out painful truths, but at least we see clearly now, don't we? Yes, I think you're right. Thank you. We th but it was also me who endangered you. Well, I yes. won't argue about that. Yes. Thank you. We well, I... Santino. Nothing yet. All right. How did you talk to everybody? Here. I always pay attention, Sonny. And because I know you like you are my own nestlings. No, I love it when you say pretty little things like that. Don't, Don't it, push Daddy. it. So, uh, what's your shoe size again, Mon? 35, Sonny. I like high heels. And because there's two of you, two pairs will do for a start. Anything for you, darling. I don't want just anything, Marty. I want shoes. Yes, ma'am. See you at the PD? At the PD, Mon. I'm trying. See you at the... At the PD, Mon. All right. Timmy, have you got a sweet release from this hell? They say you've taken down the whole Wessler Empire. They say... I say you're full of shit, Tim, and you can quote me on that. Just one quote, God. I say you're... Oh, hello. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Grumble, We're grumble. honestly very sorry it had to end like this. Yeah, this peacefully. For myself, I'm glad, gentlemen. I would have sincerely regretted it if we had to shoot both of you, but unfortunately, that seemed to be the only solution to this uh, rather nasty situation. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Joyful. Don't think we'll be behind bars for long chickens. Whistler may be dead, but his empire still won't crumble. Oh, look at that. He can talk. Hey, you got words. Too. Yeah, or something like that. Amazing. Hey, Bosco. You're a good boy, Bosco. Nice work. Good boy. Folks, somebody's got to take care of the real police work while you're tearing up the city. Sorry for the mess, Bosco, but you know us. Somebody wants scritches. Does Detective Bosco want scritches? How did you catch them? After the gunshot, I was sure these two would show up. They have a habit of doing that. I guess we're never going to meet Moses and Plato, huh? Forehead, sonny. We had the house surrounded. If you could have hung on, maybe nobody would have died. Hey, a second longer, and it would have been us. <laughs> That's your story. Cluck you sideways, Bosco. Hey, Olivia. Hey, you. Marty. I just uh, wanted to thank you. But what exactly? For trying to say. Oh, that's right. He's got a crush I didn't on. I do it only for you. Believe me. I loved my job while I had it. Now my employee is dead, so I don't have a job anymore. Now I need to find a new job. I didn't even think of that. Of course you didn't. Can I do anything to help? I think I'll manage. I always do. Do you know what the, the fucking job market is like in this city? Look at all the Yeah. Strange how. Hmm. Well. Oh, hey, you. You? What are you doing here? I was just driving around. You know. Trying to feed your grandpa. So? Was it a case? Were you, uh, maybe investigating us? What kind of investigation? Funny. Am I busted? Did someone hire you to follow us? I just had to keep an eye on you and not get involved. That's all. I admit there were a couple of crazy situations when it was hard not to. But you managed somehow, right? A professional's a professional, my friend. Yeah, thanks. 
So you won't tell us who hired you, whatever we do. Unfortunately, I can, my friend. I made a promise. You and your promises. Some people still take them seriously. You're a real piece of guano, you know that? Of course. I've learned everything from you, you old fart. Thanks. How do I get out of here? So, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, okay. The chicken police. I guess I just had to go around and talk to everybody. Damn it, Tim. Drop it's it. like fucking Xenogears all over again. Oh, boys. This time, you deserve it. What the clock did you say, boss? Stand up straight and try to look like someone who's glad to be alive. You don't know me. Yes, sir. We'll try. Ooh, attention, chicken police. Say cheese. Cheese. trophies all painting at once. The following animal species were not included in this game. The Hawaiian tree snail. The cryptic tree hunter. The lost shark. <laughs> and many others. Mostly because during the development of the game, 2018 to 2020, all these pieces were declared... Oh, hey, look at that. They're trying to get an environmentalist message in there. Is this the secret ending? Natasha. You were expecting me, weren't you? I wouldn't say that, but I'm not surprised. I just wanted to talk to you. About what exactly? You know very well. What do you think, Natasha? Why didn't she tell me? Because she loved you. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, she may have never left the place. Perhaps she'd still be there. Ah, sheep shit. We used to dream about falling in love with a nice man who comes and saves us someday. A knight in shining armor. You know, like, like in the fairy tales. And how did that work out for you? She fell in love with a good guy. I didn't. I envy her. I'm not that good guy, Natasha. But if it's any consolation, she could have found him. Maybe she's living with him right now, somewhere on the other side of the world. Well, goodbye, Sonny. So long, sweetheart. Hey, Natasha, you have a light? I've been trying to smoke this sorry-ass cig all day. It's driving me crazy. Maybe you don't really need it. Maybe you're right. Maybe. Happens, happens. Fucking nerds. Or is this the secret ending? 